Uh, and now over, the, uh, well, over to Mark. The floor will be yours now, uh, if you're ready, Mark. Thank you, Elena. I, I'd love to actually share a couple of visuals. Let me go. I, I want to just uh, respond a little bit to Chris Burton. Those of you that were here in the last session, Chris, you mentioned how do we how do we undo some of the bureaucratic or uncaring dynamics in organizations, right? Like, how do we do that? And I think my talk, I, I hope, is going to just start heading us in that direction. Um, I'm an organizational psychologist. I am on a, an absolute mission to build an emotionally intelligent world. And I think if we can get that right, Chris, some of the elements of conscious capitalism uh, are going to be lived out actually through organizations we're seeing it already through the technology the eq development technology that we're using and i think it's going to leave those kind of organizations you are concerned about behind uh and there's there's a new wave of organizations where people are cared for uh where diversity and inclusion is actually possible because emotional intelligence is high and these organizations are already starting to show that they can easily outperform uh, some of their competitors. So I'm very hopeful. Um, and, and your question, Chris, speaks very much to the heart of what I'm going to share about today, which is whether AI can help us with EQ development. Um, and to just give a little bit of a primer, I want to put it to you on the call um, that there is a spectrum of problems that organizations face. Is my screen sharing right now, by the way? Are you guys seeing a screen share? Okay. Yes, we do. That spectrum of problems ranges from systemic factors in an organization. That might be the structure, Chris, you alluded to that earlier, bureaucratic structures. That might be things like the organizational culture, right? Systemic factors, large macro factors. Problems range from systemic factors down to individuals in the system. Chris, you might be the problem in the organization, right? We need to change you if we want to affect change, right? I don't know why I'm picking on Chris, everyone, by the way. Um, and typically what we do when we want to affect this kind of change in organizations is we focus on the systemic factors, right? We do that in countries also. Some of the questions in the last session was how do we get funding for education? That's a systemic issue, right? But the domain of psychology has shown very clearly where change needs to originate for actual behavioral change to shift. And you'll see in the bottom here, there's an illustration of that research done by Martin Seligman, uh, the great father of positive psychology. Many of you will be familiar with this. He created a double-sided dog kennel with a partition in the middle that could be opened or closed and a shock plate on the one side. Of course, he put the dogs in this side. When he shocked them, they would just get away from the pain and they would jump to the other side, right? That's many people's response to AI right now. <laughs> but then he closed the partition. In other words, he, he broke the system and he shocked those same dogs again. And when they realized they couldn't get away, they would just kind of lie in the most comfortable way possible, taking the shock. But what was profound about his research was when he opened up the partition, in other words, he fixed the systemic factors and he shocked those same dogs again. They carried on lying there, taking the shock. And we now know that this has become known as learned helplessness, right? But learned helplessness is among a set of psychological paradigms that keeps people stuck in a certain way of behaving. It might also be, you know, some of them uh, uh, are also low self-esteem, external locus of control, many aspects of sexism or racism uh, in, involve a, a, a paradigm that needs to be shifted um, psychologically. And the set of competencies that shifts these psychological paradigms and so shifts the reflexive behaviors is the set of competencies that we know as emotional intelligence. Many people don't know that it is one of the most well-established constructs in the domain of psychology. And it's made up of a, a composite set of skills or specific competencies that need to be developed a little bit like you would develop a physical muscle by implementing specific techniques that naturally get implemented, by the way, when I was uh, chatting to Lena about the session, she said, Mark, but everyone has a measure of, of emotional intelligence. So what do you mean developing emotional intelligence requires techniques? Well, when we're growing up as children, some of these techniques happen quite naturally. Once we are living out our adult lives, we, we, we are in autopilot so often that we need to, if we want to shift our own emotional intelligence competencies, we actually need to implement certain specific 
uh, techniques to shift something. Um, and, and, and that implementation of techniques over time uh, is just a kind of physical fitness analogy of what's happening neurologically, which is that if you want to shift some of these reflexive responses, we now know that you need to uh, rewire some of the neural pathways in the emotional centers of the, of the brain, specifically around the amygdala, so that we can maintain a little bit more of a balance between uh, what's happening in the emotional centers and the frontal lobes. Um, and what, what technology enables now through organizations, and this is the great hope, Chris, is that it's now possible to scale the development of emotional intelligence through EQ development technology from the very senior levels of organizations down to the most junior levels. This was not possible before. And by the way, is not possible through traditional approaches to EQ development that focus on knowledge acquisition about emotional intelligence rather than on the implementation of techniques, right? And when this is done, when EQ is, is shifted across an organization, you can then shift the, the systemic factors of human behavior like organizational culture. And so uh, what becomes possible here is through technology is changing the agent at scale actually starts creating the systemic change. And, and this is radical for uh, some of the movements in, in um, uh, uh, what's happening in organizations and, and conscious capitalism. So to bring this now to the discussion of AI, I actually want to bring to the panel today a, a question of how AI might help with this technology. The technology is already developed, right? The technology can develop, measure, and track emotional intelligence at scale across organizations. It can be rolled out through all sorts of gymnastics, but the technology really uh, finds its strength in the implementation of these techniques that we're going to look at in our discussion, I, I hope, the coaching that is possible, because the current technology uses crowdsourced technique coaching to score the techniques that are done uh, and to give feedback on those techniques. And we're going to look at those techniques at a moment. And then this technology has something called a growth score, which is a, a composite algorithm that takes into account um, uh, the current and projected emotional intelligence skills and allows you to benchmark people against each other in the organization. So this is ultimately going to be a little bit like the, the, the management accounts in organizations are, are used, the financial accounts are used to make decisions about the business. What this EQ development technology is enabling is psychosocial management accounts to be able to see in real time, you know, Chris, Lena, and Mark, to what degree uh, uh, are we actually building and developing our emotional intelligence? Of course, under the assumption, Chris, that emotional intelligence is valuable to organizations. You'll have to come to the next building day because, of course, the research around that is, is copious. So just to give you an idea of the technology, I mean, it, it's a platform that develops EQ. Uh, I want to get to the input fields because this is where AI becomes valuable. This technology, of course, takes some of the empirically validated um, uh, psychological techniques. For example, this one is the three good things technique from uh, also Martin Seligman. Um, and just to show you, the three good things technique is over here. There are many different techniques that one may use to develop certain competencies in emotional intelligence. You can see just seven of them across the top here. And because these psychological techniques require uh, verbal inputs, okay, as is the case here, of course, it now becomes quite possible for AI to replace these crowdsourced technique coaches, where instead of a human scoring the techniques, of course, it, it, it is possible already for us to use certain rubrics for AI to score these techniques, um, and potentially to give feedback to users to coach them towards how to do uh, these techniques appropriately. Um, and so I'm coming with a, a, a bit of a, a question today to, to the panel, and there may be more, Lena, that, that you've prepared. But certainly my hope is that we can, uh, just for the purpose of this time, assume that what I've said around the neuroscience is correct, that actually to rewire those neural pathways, we need to implement certain techniques, right? Uh, assume that by implementing techniques, we can actually uh, shift the competencies in the domain of EQ. Um, and, and actually to spend our time focusing on how AI might be able to help uh, in this EQ development technology by 
supporting in, in one of the following ways that I've put in, in blue here, either the implementation of techniques, <laughs> how, how might this technology help us to do the techniques well, to, to, to think about positive things, to think through uh, emotional triggers, et cetera, to score the techniques, to give feedback, to look perhaps at pattern recognition across organizational units, uh, to look at sentiment analysis, uh, perhaps to help with some of the reporting, the data reporting for companies. So these are the questions um, that I'm hoping we can spend some time just engaging with in, in the building session.